to know what I brought to the table. Say it again. Can you say it he again? wanted to know what I brought to the table. Whoever and that is, shout him out. He sees and say, I, why are you not picking up the phone? But it's the fear of not being, it's the fear of being rejected. Like if you don't call me back or if you don't text me or if I say I like you and I love you and I want to be with you and you say that's not where I am, then my feelings are crushed. So now we tend to play like I don't want to express myself unless you express yourself. Or if you come to the line, I'll come mm -hmm. to the line. Want to know why the hoes are getting wiped up or the girls with the past or the girls who shake their booties on Instagram or stuff like that. It's because they are who they are. At the end of the night, a man doesn't have to guess who she is. There are, there are women who date broke guys because they're in love. There were high value men, and I mean high value <laughs> men. I chose to be with someone who didn't have as much as this guy because I felt like this guy meshes with me well. We already know, ladies, if a man asks you what you bring to the table, you need to just get up and walk to another table and let him see what you do at another table. Give you the real. We're gonna keep it real. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real at the eight. We're gonna... I like this, I like this. Eight at the table. You know the vibes. What's going on, everybody? It's your man, Rico Hundo. You already know the vibes, sticking up for my guys. But I, that rhyme, that's pretty dope, right? All right, so we got a special guest today, but before we jump into that, thank you everybody for the love, the support, the likes, the comments. Keep doing your thing, because we appreciate it. Now let's go straight into our one-on-one -on -one with our special guest, Kiyomi. What's good, you guys? This is Kiyomi Leslie, and tonight you're gonna see me in a different light. I'm gonna get raw and uncut. You're gonna see me vulnerable. I'm gonna have a one-on-one, -on -one, like, Give you the real. We're gonna keep it real. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it real at the eight. We're gonna... I like this. I like this. Eight at the table. You know the vibes. All right, so look. <laughs> All right, so boom. I'm gonna get straight to it because that's okay. just how I do. You know okay. We're going straight to the Straight to the point. Straight to the point. So we were like, you know, lurking on your gram or whatever. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not the first time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, we saw that you said something in regards to the game and men. So I'm going to ask this question. Okay. Should you or how do you, either or, sell a man a dream or the same dream that he's trying to sell the woman? Okay. Um, what I said was, I'm going to sell a man the same dream that he wanted me to buy. Mm. And what I mean by that is like, I feel like men try to sell you on something and they, they think that you're supposed to buy into it. But me, I'm going to play into it, but I'm going to make you buy the same dream that you wanted me to. What if that requires certain actions? I mean... Like, for example, right? Let's say it's like, I, he's selling you a dream by telling you all this extravagant things. And he's like, all right, we're going to go out X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Let's pick Greece. Okay. So now he sold you the dream of going to Greece. You gonna match that? <laughs> I wanna go to Santorini. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, a little bikini. Ex you know what I'm saying? And now y'all got that whole vibe. Y'all got y'all there for four or five days, whatever. Okay. How do you sell that dream? How do you match that energy? That's easy. Like I'm going to be on whatever vibe he's on. Like I'm gonna make you feel comfortable with me. If you're talking about marriage, life, and kids, I'm right there. I really do. Like, that sounds so good. Like, that's wonderful. And I mean, you know, when you touch, you transfer energy. So I'm going to always keep my energy high so that when I transfer my energy, you feel where I'm coming from. And she's doing this really good, by the way. But uh, what I'm going to say is, that's cool. And I get that. And I understand that. But my thing is, it's like, now let's just say, if he's telling you the dream on like the lifestyle, which you mm -hmm. might already know, right? But now he wants to press forward. It's not about wife and kids and futuristic. It's about sex tonight, now, and Greece. Okay. So how do you, are you going to match that? Are you going to sell him that same fantasy? Mm, I think that's kind of tiptoeing the line because as a woman, we always have the right to choose. I've been flown out. What is it? Flewed out. But, you know, I've been flown out to a lot of places. And I mean, if a guy expects sex, then that's just what he expects. But in my mind, I'm just going to have a great time. And so um, I always feel like if we're grown and yeah. that happens, 
then it happens. But I don't feel pressed to like if he's trying to get me to go there and I don't want to, then I'm just going to be like, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not there yet. All right. So my question is this, because I, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Right. And I and honestly, I agree. I, I like the grown part. But what I'm going to say is what happens when you're in that position and he's really pressing, but you're saying, no, maybe he falls off tonight, but tomorrow's another day. He's pressing. He's OD. And I know how guys are because I'm a guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you don't give it to me the first time, I'm still going to keep consistent. I've been there. Exactly. And I've just said no. Like, But you're not uncomfortable? As a woman, no, I'm not. I mean, it can be uncomfortable like if that happened to you the, for the first time, but mm. after a while, you just get comfortable. Like, it's like, no, my cycle's on, can't. Or I'm just, this is really not, like, you flew me out <laughs> yeah. here to just have sex with me, no. Please make sure before you even book the plane ticket, <laughs> you check her cycle dates. <laughs> because we can't use that as an excuse. <laughs> but she's smart. All right, but my thing is, all right, boom. Let's get real now. Mm -hmm. Real, real. Okay. Let's say a guy is selling you a dream. Mm -hmm. Because now you got to realize you're both players. Yeah. You playing, he playing. Sometimes players end up with nobody because they keep playing the game, which realistically is a con to the game because if you playing and I'm playing and then nobody... We don't know what's real. We don't know what's real. So now, how do you decipher the two? Um, I think it, for me, it mostly goes on the vibe. Like, um, for me, I've been in a situation where we played, like, when it first started out, it was just, okay, we know that we're both having fun. We're both just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And then, like, over the course of time, I'm like, what are we doing? Because at this point, we're spending a lot of time. And I may not ask that directly, but I show it with my actions. Like, am I spending the night frequently? Am I, like... Like moving in, you know, guys will make you feel comfortable. And if I feel comfortable, then I'm gonna like try to see where I can get with it. Mm -hmm. And if I don't feel anything, I'm not gonna press it anymore. I'm just gonna move on. But you don't think that that like doesn't warrant a conversation? Yeah, because action? I had a guy like he told me like he was just like I thought that we were in a relationship already, and I was like I didn't. And I asked <laughs> you, like I asked him what we were doing, and he said. You know, he wanted to know what I brought to the table. Say it again. Can you say it He again? wanted to know what I brought to the table. Whoever and that is, shout him out. We'll go my ahead. baby dad. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I just, I originally got offended by the question because I feel like if you don't see what I bring to the table, then, you know, you will never see it. But, you know, as women, we might not financially bring the same but I bring the napkins, I bring the plates, I bring the food. Don't Every you, you know, No, because you may bring the table, but I bring the things to make the table. And making the table is just as important. I can't let you run with this. I really want to be on this side. <laughs> but I had to really fire somebody up that said really? that. Yo, because that's not good enough. Why is it not good enough? You know what would be a better answer? What? If I'm going to help you build another table. I don't believe in that. Like, if Let's we're a team, it. if we're a team, we're building one unit. We're building a table. I don't you have to go make you build another team. table. You're a partner. All right, I'm not gonna get too far into okay, that. But ahead. what I want to say, what I want to say is, all right. So he asked you what you bring to the table, mm -hmm. and you got offended by it originally. Mm -hmm. What was your answer? I really didn't have an answer because it was just on some chilling at the crib and he was just talking. I was letting him talk candidly mm -hmm. without interrupting. And so I didn't really want to interrupt where he was going. But he was just like, out of all the girls I talked to. And once he said that, I kind of like tuned out. I was like, out of all the girls he talked to. So, so he talked to, to right. Than... And so I didn't even want to <laughs> offer what I brought to the table. So um, after that, I kind of moved on and I was just like, okay, it is what it is. And then I moved on to uh, a new guy and we started dating publicly. And, you know, he was like, I thought we were in a relationship. So I was surprised by you getting in another relationship. And I was like, you never told me. He's like, I didn't think I had to because I felt like I had options. And when he saw me at another table, that made him reconsider what I brought to the table. But this is what I'm trying to say, right? In totality, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like relationships are really precious. Right. And it's more precious now than it ever has been because now most relationships fail. Mm -hmm. And I personally, personally believe a big reason why most relationships fail today is because of that. You playing, I'm playing. One takes something some way, one takes something another way. I take accountability for that. That is a problem that I tend to have a little. 
you know, that, oh my God. it's all about accountability. Oh, but cry. That's the first <laughs> time I heard a woman on Eight at the Table said, I'm going to take accountability for that. But I agree, though. Mm-hmm. And that's the, and, and that's, but that's real shit, though, because sometimes, like, it gets misconstrued. Right. Like, you're saying well, you that. You know why? What? Because it's pride. Like, I've had to set my pride aside. Like, if I really like you, mm-hmm. I'll send that triple text message. I'll send you the ABCs and say, I, why are you not picking up the phone? But it's the fear of not being, it's the fear of being rejected. Like, if you don't call me back or if you don't text me or if I say, I like you and I love you and I want to be with you. And you say, that's not where I am. Then my feelings are crushed. So now we tend to play like, I don't want to express myself unless you express yourself. Or if you come to the line, I'll come mm-hmm. to the line. Meet me halfway instead of just owning up. And if that person doesn't, then just be okay with it. I feel like that's, I, I mean, I agree with that 100%. I think that's really a, a young, it's a young mentality. Yeah. I feel like as adults, once you start to grow up, especially us, yo, and I. But who's raising who these days? It's the young raising the young. It's not a grandmother raising you and giving you the game or a mother you know or a I father. Think? I think it's actually the lost ones raising the young. Because I've true? I've learned how to be straightforward with my my intentions mm-hmm. with a woman from and that gets you further outside right? of my mom right outside of my mom she put me on game but when I really 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 first implemented it it came from an older woman mm-hmm. who had had many failed relationships who told me tell me what it is right up front yeah and so I said, I'll know how to move. And, you know, and I did that and, you know, going on and on with all the relationships that I had, whether it been serious or not, whether it been one of many, whatever the case may be, I've always kept it that way. And I feel like there's always a dream that's being sold that's preventing right. that. Right. But like even times I had to tell girls to chill because they was trying to sell me a dream. I'm like, yo, listen, it's cool. I'm not even here for all of that. We're not even going to get that far. A woman is going to tell you what she thinks that you want to hear that will make her more acceptable or more likable or pleasing to you. But you know what a man appreciates? The truth. When a woman tells the truth. But sometimes the truth can be... If I, if you were interested in me mm-hmm. and I sat here and said, I've slept with over this amount of men. I used to dance. I used to do this and I used to do that. It may, It may be like... You may put me in a different space now. Like, I can't date you, but I like you. So we can have sex, but I won't take you seriously. And you won't tell me that because you don't want to hurt my feelings, but you'll have that in your mind. And so most of the time, men will drag you along for as long as you're willing to play on the bus or the car, wherever. They'll drag you along, string you along. You have no intentions of getting married, having children, being in a relationship. You know, it's funny. That woman usually wins. The one that's honest. Let me ask you a question, right? Have you ever been with a man who told you, yo, we're not going to take it serious. I'm messing with you and I'm messing around. You ever had that? Mm, Maybe once or twice, but... Okay, mm. so let's just say, whatever, once or twice, out of those times, did you stay after he told you that? Yes. If I did Mm -hmm. stay, um, if I did, Mm -hmm. I didn't take him seriously. Like, I started dating other people. Yeah, but you still stayed, right? You You still exercised time. Maybe. Right? So let's, I'm just saying that to say this. When a guy is honest with you, mm-hmm. you're still going to exercise your time. For sure. And as a man, I'm telling you, from a man's perspective, right? If you was honest with me about, not saying you did or do right, whatever, right, right. but like your past, right? We will still, honestly, we will feel safer with you. Right. And that is why a lot of women today, like I'm, I'm giving you, when I speak, I'm giving you the broad, like the general, but... For me, the most of the time I feel like when women say, oh, she's a hoe or she's this or she's that, and they want to know why the hoes are getting wifed up or the girls with the past or the girls who shake their booties on Instagram or stuff like that, it's because they are who they are. At the end of the night, a man doesn't have to guess who she is. It's the girl that has to hide who she is, and he is finding out like all of this secret stuff about her. Ah! <laughs> Yo, because earlier today, right, we were talking about, we had a guy talk, like, early, earlier today we were talking, and they said that, one of my homies said, my dad taught me one thing, is that you never know. Mm-hmm. When it comes to women, you mm-hmm. never know. And that's such a broad statement, but it, it describes it, right. a lot, you know right, what I'm saying? It does. So when, 
when a girl that is, but I'm not gonna lie, those typically don't get white for long. I think that thing where they say women are better cheaters is really true because we can we can go out and do everything and still come home, fix the food, kiss the kids, put them in the bed, and still have sex with you. That's you. Like That's you. Relax. A lot of women can't General. cook. Nah, women can't. Okay, a lot of women can't, can't cook now. She can't fix the food, <laughs> and she's and she's moving sloppy. And now we got group chats. Before oh back then, God. we didn't have okay, group yeah, chats. Yeah, yeah, Instagram. So, yeah, <laughs> now because I, I was saying this earlier, not early, but on a prior episode that women women say. Men talk more than women, right? In the I think not in a politically correct way, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's not really the only thing is that we actually be like, yo, bro, don't don't do that. We already know her. Do you consider that hating? No, nah, I consider that real. Cause guess what? If I was a hoe, every woman is different for the man that she wants to be different for. Like, I may have been a hoe. I may have not taken any guy serious, but then I get with you and I'm like, I tell you, you everything. Be my wife? It don't work that way. I'm different. Like I'm like it does. It can like it can work differently. Like you want to women are different. Just like a man is different for the woman. You might not spend nothing on me, but go to the next girl and you buy her everything. But it's different though because this is why it's different. And I we can't speak when it comes to women versus men on that and that ideology only in my opinion only because a man is typically the provider. Now, if the woman is providing, then she could do whatever she wants to do. But when it's a man, it's like, yo, if I'm going to provide for you, knowing that you, that I, the person I'm providing for was out here with all of these other persons, I kind of look crazy providing for a person who has been spread thin. That's ego. That's ego talking. And when yeah, you release the ego and you talk with reassurance and confidence, then you won't have to feel like you have to talk to because what you're really saying is I don't want my friends looking at me providing for you and you used to be this this and that mm -hmm. like if you're confident in yourself yes this is a woman but she's changed and you may have had her but you have not had her in the way that I've had her I mean I look at it as standards not ego and at the end of the day we have to draw the line on what our standards are because at some point in time you're not going to deal with certain things that have that you know somebody's bringing to the table or I don't want to say bring to the table that you know but certain things that somebody's past has you know, that has transpired in their past. As a man, and I'm telling you, for most men, we're not going to stick with that knowing because we, as a man, I... And my so woman, you want the truth. Now, a yeah. woman doesn't feel like, and, and to go back to what we were talking mm -hmm. about, with women towing the line or lying or withholding information, and that's mm -hmm. because of what you're just saying right now. Like, a woman can be your perfect candidate, but because of her past, you X her out without even giving her a chance because of her past. Now, if I lie to you about that past and show you me, and you get to know me, and then you find out about my past, maybe... No, that's even worse. You, no, you may look past it. Nah, hell no. I guarantee you most men will look past it. I mean, they will look They're, past but. Just because they look past it doesn't mean they're being real with you now. Once you set the standard that you're a liar, we're going to lie to you. That's how men work. And men so, lie too. No, we all, no, we all yes. lie. We all withhold information. I mean, yes. I, I'm not going to say nobody's flat out honest. But what I'm saying is when it comes to who you are, how you are, or what you were, it's your job and your duty to actually be transparent with who you want to take serious. Because the last thing you want is something in the past coming back up in the future. That sure. kind of That's how I lead. But at the same time, you have to be willing to accept that or say up front that, you know, if you tell me something about your past that I can't take, then mm -hmm. I'm not going to be you, in a relationship. And, and I'm a, a, this is my opinion, right? Most times people can take what you did in the past. Most times people will take what you, what you did in the past. It's all about, it's all about when they find out and how they find out. Now, it's like women love when a man gives them that option, right? Men love when the woman is real to give him that option. I, the look, option of what? Like to know, like if you was really outside before, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying he's not gonna dub you right away. I'm, he's probably not gonna wife you, right? <laughs> but but he's definitely gonna exercise it. But there are men that can look past it. But the only way that that's gonna happen is if. You're open from the get go. Uh, well, I mean, in, in, I can speak from my experience. The guys that I date, like, I don't have a long history, but I've done like jobs that were not considered the good girl jobs, like dance. And as a dancer, you know, that comes with a stigma. Yeah. And so when I danced, I like to keep it, you know, upfront and honest with the guy. Now, 
with some guys, I don't tell them that I dance, especially if you didn't meet me in the in the strip club. I'm not going to tell you that up front. I'm going to wait for you to know who I am, because if I go to you and say I'm a dancer, you're going to say, oh, she's trying to get me or she's she's all about this or she's all about that or she's having sex with customers when that's not who I am. It's a job. And when I leave home, that job stays there. I mean, you consider yourself to be a high value man. You are a high value man. So how is it? You know, how is it when you're a high value man for you to have a woman who can also go from another table and get another high value man after dealing with you? Like, what do you feel? Like, how how does that work? I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because a high value man is always in a win win position. Right. But you're saying a woman with the past is not going to be dateable or is that your exact word? No, I'm saying like some. Well, when the past. Some paths are not dateable, right? Because some high value men are just not gonna, just right. not gonna do that. Now, I'm not saying everyone, right? Because right. I can't speak for everybody. But um, sometimes what you do do in the past will haunt your future. I right. believe in but that. But if it but, haunts you, what yeah. if I go sit at another table or another woman goes sitting at another table mm-hmm. and that man says, I accept you? Because women nowadays we that are high value women, we can go and sit at another table for, for a high value man. You never have to downgrade. You can still go up. So what happens is your your habits or what you practice become a habit. Mm-hmm. You're just going to be bouncing from tables and tables and tables and tables. All right. And eventually what's going to happen is you're going to end up at no table. See, this is what we talked about before on mm-hmm. the shelf life. You only have a certain amount of time before you can bounce on so many tables. As a woman. As a woman. Mm-hmm. So if you bounce on my table and then you bounce on his table and then you bounce on that table, realistically, you got to spend time at each table. But there are some women who do get wifed. And they stay there. And I don't, and I feel like I don't want to push both, wife and kept, because I believe in both. You, If you wife a woman and you have the means to take care of her, she should be kept. She should be taken care of. You should spoil your woman. That's what I believe. I believe everybody should And the men that I've dated have also agreed with that, that we live in this world where they call it tricking, you know? They say, like, oh, I don't want to trick on a girl. But the men who have money or have, like, who have who lo- enjoy spending money on women? They don't mm-hmm. see it as that. They they see it as if I look good, my woman speaks for me, and I'm gonna make sure that when she steps out, that she is speaking for me. Like you don't gotta talk. Yeah. When you see me, you see my woman. She's fly. Yeah, but that's I feel like that's a traditional mindset of a man, in a sense where if a man is spending to make his woman look the part, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean she fits the part. See, a lot of men nowadays, I feel like, value women that fits the part rather than looks the part, right? Yeah, I spend money on her, right? But she got her own money. Right, for sure. So I don't mind spending money on her because she got her own money. And she actually spends money on me. We spend money on each other. Okay, we, 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 we hit on that, yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nobody wants somebody that's lack. It's 2022. Gas is over five to six dollars a gallon right now. Hold on, what that post say? <laughs> yeah. You talk about the gas. I then know that your designer ain't real. Fake. But what I'm saying is, it's 2022. Even gas is high. Nobody's dealing with somebody that don't got it. Right. Not a man. I feel like for women though, yeah. it's more acceptable because I saw this one interview where the guy was like, "If a woman has it all, like, <sighs> like I saw it, and I was just like, what? Like, it like- makes women feel like." We got to be good, but we can't be too good. We got to be rich, but we can't be too rich. Because if we're too rich, we intimidate men. So it's like, where's the balance? Can I tell you this? Never take that type of guy's advice. Please. I'm going to tell you from, because as a high value man, Mm -hmm. see, and and this is my, scratch me being a high value man, right? A high value man will find value in a woman that can actually do what he does and appreciate it. A insecure rich man will find it intimidating when a woman is making money. Right. It's way different. Right. You know what I'm saying? I like, like, and I say this all the time. I'm gonna say it again. My mom is a very hardworking and woman, and she makes What's a lot her of good sign? money. She's a Leo. Oh, Leo Aries. Y'all fired. Right. I know. I deal with y'all all the time. Trust me. <laughs> like <laughs> my whole life. I know it. So, but like, I value that so much because mm-hmm. that's the type of woman that I watch. Right. I, wa- I was raised by a woman that can get to it. 
right. figure it out. So I appreciate it. So do you it. believe that because you watched your mom do it, that a, a woman is supposed to do it on her own? A hundred percent. Like, so because your mom was a strong woman yeah. who was able to do all of these things, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if she did it alone or whatever, you yeah. think that a woman should be able to? I don't want to... I, I, I feel like I hold it to a higher regard than most men would. I feel like in the black community, we hold black women to a different standard. We want them to be strong, black, independent. But in other races or other mm -hmm. cultures, that's not the case because th they're called gold diggers or or they've dated for financial stability. And I feel like when it comes to black women, we're we're looked down upon for dating for st uh, financial mm -hmm. stability. I just think it goes with how how you're raising what you've seen. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example, right? If I was a man, let's say you're dating two men. You mm -hmm. dated two men. Mm -hmm. One man in your life got it out the streets, out the mud, but he got it. You know what I'm saying? He got it. Everything that a rich person got, he got. Yeah. Jet, whatever it is, he got it, but he He's got well it. Off. But he got it out the mud. Right. But that man wouldn't be as valuable to you had you had watched somebody get it out the right way. Right. If I was working a job and I was a doctor, but I got the same as this guy, but I'm a doctor and I'm doing all this extra stuff, mm -hmm. you wouldn't even be like, yo, the risk that you're taking is not worth it for me. As the street guy or as the doctor? As the street guy. Okay. Because if you were if you were if you grew up watching your dad, let's mm -hmm. just say, be somebody that supplied you all of these things. luxury things and he supplied it the right way, you would not look at the street guy and you might get tempted because we all want the thrill, but scratch the thrill. When we come to keeping and, and having a husband, you would not try to marry somebody who's, who's risking his life. Because when I have a child, I want you to be like... You want to be stable. like stable, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's because of what you've seen. Right. Now, if you've never seen a doctor or you've never seen somebody who is getting that money and you saw your dad but in the street... that's not true, though. Because in my case, yeah. my dad did like 25 years in prison and... I saw that as something, you know, he got locked up on drug charges. But my thing is, I didn't see that as a bad thing, but I nece didn't necessarily go for that type. Like, yeah. I saw something, I, I attracted more professional men. And mm -hmm. although I was in an industry that wasn't professional, I still mm -hmm. attracted a certain type because of how I carried myself. And that makes sense because there is, all right, so there is a double-edged sword where you could say, all right, I learned what not to do. Right. But majority of the cases, they actually repeat the cycle, right? So yeah. this is yeah. why, like, and I'm going to give you some kudos. This is why you have success, because you've learned what not to what do. What not to do. You know what I'm saying? Most people don't know what not to do. So they, they kind of repeat it, and it happens over and over again. So I so to answer your question in totality, I'm saying, yes, I do hold the women to a higher, higher standard than the average traditional man would, because I know your abilities. I don't know your abilities personally, but I know from the women, my grandmother has her own company that makes a lot of money. But I feel like you're putting pressure, like, and not yeah. just you, but like men, the, the men in general, you're putting pressure on women to be a certain standard when each woman is made differently. So you're holding these women a, a, to a standard. Like you didn't see their struggle because I'm yeah. sure all of them struggled, but they, yep. they yeah. did it. But in the same sense, like everybody is different. So you can't say because my mom did it, because my grandmother did it, that you got to, I got to see you struggle because that makes you a real one. Like, yeah. no, women are soft. We, we deserve to be catered to just yeah. like any other, like, race or you know black women i feel like they shouldn't have to struggle or get it out the mud but I, i'll tell you this like okay if i was to tell you right now like i was a housewife mm -hmm. what would you automatically think just right off the top of your head i'm a housewife you ask me what my job is i would have to ask you how long you've been a housewife i'd have to ask that question three it, years then i'd be like okay cool then she was she's probably capable of something because she wasn't a housewife before. If you said you've been a housewife all your life, then I'd be like, it's different. Now, but most people see being a housewife or a house mom or whatever you want to call it as not a job when there are some men who strictly want you to be a housewife. I don't want like, you to work. Yeah. I don't want you to do anything but take care of the house, me and the kids. But you got to understand that that's a, that's a traditional man, right? So now we're talking about, like, I can't speak for anybody. I'm in my 20s. I'm gonna talk about today in a 20 year old man. Mm -hmm. I watched every woman from my parents to the women that I went to high school with to the women that I went to college with making memes. 
right? And as a man... That doesn't make it right. No, no, no. Just it, because I, you saw him make no, no, means doesn't mean it's right. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but what I'm saying is you have to know who you're dealing with. So most high value men and, and men and I'm an, and I'm just speaking for myself. I got it out the mud. I started mm-hmm. at the very ground. I started at ground right. negative too. two. Me too. You know Me too. We <laughs> and, and look and look where we sit. Right, right, right at the table. And, and at the table because you know why you possess something at the table and I possess something right. at the table. So I value you and you value me. We have a we have a mutual respect for each other. Right now there are men that are I. I personally feel that are super insecure and mm-hmm. possessive and use their money to control the narrative narrative for sure, of their for sure. But those are weak men. Those men don't get respected by by the real high value men in right. this world. There's a lot of like people think that money makes you valuable, but money does not make you valuable. Right. There's a lot of cornballs with money. And money doesn't make you happy. At the end of the yeah. day, you can have a lot of money and you can be in a relationship and have it all, but still not be happy. And I think that's where we're at in today's rela- relationship world. Like a lot of people look happy on Instagram and like they have yeah. it all together, but behind closed doors, they're probably not having sex. They probably sleep in separate rooms. They don't talk for months or they hate each not other that. in real life. I'm not doing that. But it makes sense to be together. Nah, that's like some weird shit. I can't. But that's the reality. I feel like people. My opinion is the situation that you're talking about. People get, people fear being alone. Those are people that fear being alone, or they think that they're too old to go back in the field. And and that's a whole different ball game where you know you have women and men both get into the game and they don't know what they what? doing. They still posting up pictures like this. <laughs> like, like, well, hold on, move the phone right. back. Right. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> but um, I, I, I want to get back to what you were saying because I didn't get to fully answer that question. And I believe that um, it's unfair that as a as a man that I can't be appreciative or be praised for being appreciative of the woman's ability. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I believe and I know what right. you can do, I'm not saying push you. And yes, it's pressure. Honestly, there would never be a single relationship that I am in that there is no pressure because no, I need the I best of you. Pressure okay. is needed, but when you when you say that you don't want to be with a woman or you can't be with a woman or you don't consider her a high value woman because you didn't see her go through this pressure, then that's what I mean is is like wrong or yeah. Oh, like you, you can, don't. You can know change it, yeah. that narrative. Like she can, she can be from like the struggle and still be soft and taken care of. She of doesn't course, just yeah. have to get it out the mud for you to love a woman. Like she. Yeah. What if she didn't have to go? What if she didn't have to work hard? That's like, cool. but she was still a good woman. A man just wants a woman that's an asset. And he not was, a liability. He, yeah, he respects an asset as a partner. Right. Because you're a partner. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you want. When I say I do to death do us part, you got work to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I got work to do. We but got work to do. That goes back to what you were saying about like the games, because I feel like that is in itself a, a game. If you are, if you're having a partner, then you should pick up where your partner lacks. Like, if I lack anything, help me, teach me. If you really love me, bring me up to where you are. If you say I like this person, this person is my soulmate. She may not have the sh- pressure or she may not have the type of ambition or whatever you can give her ambition maybe she just hasn't had anybody show her that maybe nobody around her has given her guidance you can be that guidance women will love you more if you teach them something you know what and come here come here, come here. <laughs> i gotta ask you one question now because you okay. didn't set this up okay you. okay and i hope you can answer it because I, we had a conversation so I'm going to ask you a question, and I asked this question to one other guest, and I'm going to ask you because you touched it. I was never going to say it. Oh, my goodness. What you about to ask? I'm going to ask you because we're talking about picking up where you left off. Mm-hmm. We're talking about being a partner, and it sounds poetic, and that's cool. All right. I'm going to say what I said to you to somebody else. Okay. I, all the women in my relationship, everyone in my real serious relationships, mm-hmm. I could tell you what I taught them. Okay. When your partner was lacking something, mm-hmm. partners, anyone, yeah. what have you taught one of your partners? Um, one of my partners was not good at public speaking, and I was really good at public speaking. That was my strong point. Interviews kind of made them nervous, and 
Um, I help them with being comfortable and how to not say like, um, and, uh, and all of those things. Like I, I, I'm comfortable being in the public eye. And so I kind of help them with that. I gave them tips on how to be on Instagram. Like they're, they just want to do one thing. I may teach them like, okay, look, this is how you can make money on Instagram. This is how I make money. Like different avenues. See the window. No. Found it. Like, I feel like... Yo, I, I like that. So go ahead. I feel like, you know, when you ask me these Why didn't you say that, though? What? That's something that you bring to the table. Knowledge. But like I said, I didn't feel... I felt like when I sat down at that table, if you don't see what I bring to the table, watch me go do it at another table because I don't have to explain what I can do to you, like do for you at this table. He saw me doing what I was doing at another table and he came back around to the table and we sat down and we... Are now eating. You know what I'm saying? So. But my thing is this, and and this is a game that people play. And mm -hmm. uh, shit, I might put my business out there. No, listen. Okay, one thing I was gonna say. Sometimes when you ask women these kind of questions, we get nervous, and we, like I said, we wanna we wanna tell you what you wanna hear, but sometimes we may not know how to express it. And so if I don't know how to express it, now I'm getting angry, and I'm speaking out of anger and emotion, and I can't give you the message like I want to. Okay, so that sounds like a, a woman thing, yeah, for sure. or, or I'm not going to say all women, but that sounds like a personal thing that needs to be yeah. practiced. Um, but I just thought about something, and you know what's crazy to me? What? I had a relationship where she didn't know how to be a wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And what do you consider a wife? Like, she didn't know how to do, all right, this is what you have to do in my household. Okay. You have to be able to do some domestic work. In terms cook, of cook, clean, cook, cook. take care of the kids. One of them, she did okay. none of them. You know what wow. I'm saying? So she don't cook, she don't clean. But she didn't get a ring. <laughs> so what? I, so what ended up happening was I left her, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, Yo, you listen, not for nothing. Like you lack some things that I'm looking for. Right. And it's just me. I'm not. Did every, you tell her like that? Straight like that. Okay. And it's not just every like you might find a guy that might be really cool with it. Really of you. I don't think, keeping it real. Okay. So. um after that, I left, boom. But you know, you always double back and you talk, especially when you're in the same state, right, whatever. Right, right, right. And she was telling me about this new guy that she was talking to, right? And now how she was doing all these things for him. And she said that the guy looked at her and said, the guy looked at her and said, why are you doing this? I can tell this is not you. And she said, well, because my ex left me because he I said didn't I didn't do, do these things. So I'm trying to do these things. So she's trying to place napkins on a new table. But she can't even fold it right. Hmm. Well, that might not have been his love language. You remember when I said, <laughs> you, you I remember like that. the I question like that. that I said is, what is a wife to you? To some men, True. and I can use my sister. She's not going to kill me for this. But I can use my sister as an example. She does not like to cook. She does not like to clean. But she still Shit. gets a man to love her and love her hard. I mean, she's an Aquarius and everything. Oh, she's a she's, she's different. She's a lovable, she's different. yeah, she's yeah. a lovable person, but you know, she still gets wife, but I feel like she attracts a type of man that says she doesn't need to do those things. Like that's if she can't cook, I'll bring I'll, you know, I'll buy food, like I'll cook. Like, you know, I feel like in a relationship it's give and take. If I don't like cooking, then you cook. Yo, you know what I just thought about? I I don't mean to like kind of like go on a tangent, but I just thought about something, right? I don't know how old you are. I'm gonna tell you, like back in the day. We were on the same age. All right, cool. I like that. So back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. I remember. Back in the day, that's. I'm talking okay, about high ahead. school, oh, like, okay, okay. but like <laughs> freshman year in high school. Okay. Black women. Mm -hmm. Black women used mm -hmm. to say this, and yo, this is so crazy. I'm hold thank on, you I'm God. About to, I'm about to thank you God for on. bringing this up because like I I forgot all about this, right? Black women used to say, stop dating white women. This is 2007, by the mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. Black women should stop, I mean, black men should stop dating white women because you're just going to be eating takeout every day. Hold mm. on, wait, what? Re rewind that. Black, black men, men should stop dating. Who uh, said this? This was like a thing back in the day. Like, okay. if you dated a white girl, you was eating takeout food every day because they couldn't cook. cook. Okay. But now it's so funny because look at how the narrative has changed over the last 15 years. Now you, I don't know. I think it's. I really think it's about where you are and and where that man is mentally. Because mm -hmm. when I moved to Atlanta, I used to like. I'm from. 
I like to say I'm from the country. I'm from like North Carolina, mm -hmm. so Southern Belle. But when I, I used to cook all the time, and then when I moved to Atlanta, you know, a guy would say, "Oh, I have her wrapped around my fingers, got her cooking and cleaning." But they would, I feel like they didn't take me serious, yeah. and I was like young fresh ready and vulnerable so it was a good stage yeah. but they didn't take that serious and i feel like a man has to be mentally in the right space to accept those things from a woman because that man may have not have been in the right place to accept her cooking and cleaning i'm gonna say this all right before i'm gonna say i want to use a different word mm -hmm. i don't like accept i'd rather choose appreciate okay right but just to touch it on what I was saying, because I don't want to get it misconstrued. Mm -hmm. When I say look at how the narrative has mm -hmm. changed, I was really speaking in the sense of like now it's like take out food and eating out is cool, redundantly. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. The key to a man's heart is being able to take care of the home. Right? And whatever that may whatever that may involve, everybody's home is different. Right, you could pay a saying. maid maybe. If, all, right. the, if you got a 15 bedroom house, I'm not expecting you to vacuum all 25 bedrooms. Even if I got bedrooms. a three bedroom house, like I don't feel like my job, I wasn't put on earth to be a maid, a maid and cook and clean and serve you. That was not my job. Ooh, you sparked my what? nerves on that. What did I spark? Yo, because that's one of my most like, ugh, like it's my skin crawls when I hear. What? A woman is not supposed to be a maid or serve a man when they forget. Like, don't forget. Okay, I'm listening. Don't a forget. A man what? ain't supposed to be a slave. How do we make you slaves? What do you mean? If this house that I'm paying for, if I'm a construction worker, no matter what it is, there's there's a majority of men that's breaking their back or their pocket to try to provide for a woman. And you I, don't think a woman does the same. But what I'm saying is I'm serving you. And a woman is serving you. But you're she saying takes you're not care supposed of the kids. Do you think raising a child is easy? Could you do it 24-7, seven, seven days a week, all day, by yes. yourself? I, it's a I, hard... I most I could, men... Admit, you're a high-value man. Oh, thank you. Most, most, <laughs> most men could not perform that duty by themselves all the time. Like, mm. women take care of the child. We, 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 we give our bodies away. We give our time. We go through postpartum depression. We still have to cook, clean, have sex with you when you want it or desire it, look good. All of those things are hard work as well. But I'm saying is like that, and I'm not knocking that. But what I'm saying is, to me, it's weird when somebody says to me, right? I'm, I'm not saying that I won't do it. I'm just saying that's not why. That's not my sole purpose here. Why oh, would no, you yeah, want yeah, me yeah, to do that all day, twenty four seven? If you said these are your duties, and I've had this conversation with mm -hmm. the guy. Like, if he said, I want you to cook, clean, and take care of the kid, right? Okay, if I don't want to clean and I can hire a maid service with my money, that should not be a problem to you if I don't want to do that. Nah, it wouldn't, but it would if you did it if you did it solely. Because as a parent, I believe you're supposed to lead by example, so you can't teach your kid how to clean if you're always paying for somebody else to clean. That doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? But what I would say is, like, Everybody, women need to understand that you may feel like you're a servant to a man, but never forget that a man is a servant to you. We're a servant equally. That's exactly. what partnership and, is. And that's what got to be understood. But I don't feel as though I should be cooking and cleaning and doing and all that And I don't that feel as though I should be working every day and all my money is going to this house, which is for this family. But, but think about it like this. Even if you didn't have me, you would still have to provide those things for yourself. No, no, no. So when not you say that, don't just say that you're providing it. Nah. So would you live a lower lifestyle because you yes, don't have a every woman? man will live a low. You ever been to a man's crib and then they'd be like, I make this house a home. You know how you made it a home? Because you took the money and you bought decor. We was cool without the decor. We was cool in the studio with a little, with a we full cool time. <laughs> with the cheap mats on the floor yeah, in the like, bathroom. We was cool with that. But like a man will lower his standard because he'll, he'll go ahead and rock out on the basic necessities of what he needs to go on a day-to-day, -day. but he would amplify and give everything that he can when he has a family. I'm not going to say a and woman. You, should. you lead by example. If you have a son, you want your son to do the same, okay, right? Cool. So, so what I'm saying is, woman, why is it just keep it equal? I'm a slave to you. You a slave to me. And if you don't want to go to work, sometimes you shouldn't have to, but that's not my, that's not my fault. Listen, you got to go to work. Maybe work. you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you can work for yourself and take yeah. these off. All right. So know? like this, like all this, we're going to jump into the next one. I just thought about what you said about the meme, mm -hmm. right? When it's like, 
if you talk, talking about gas prices, we know your uh, designer ain't it's real, thing, yeah. which is bullshit. But what I would say is it's kind of crazy in my opinion because this is my opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel like in our community, right, our community, when we're starting to run low or we need to, you know, maximize our resources instead of cutting back on a lot of the things that we do that may be foolish or maybe just, you know, leisure. I feel like our women be like, yo, double down. Like, nah, you better not stop now. Or if you stop now, oh, you broke. Or if you stop, it's a lot of, it's a lot of like tension that comes with it. Opposed to like, when you see like billionaires and they losing money, they be like, yo, sell the yacht. I don't care. Sell that beach house. I don't care. Sell everything. I'm keeping my bread. We're going to, we're going to give us like another three or five years. We'll buy everything again. I think it's all about communication. Like, especially if you're in a relationship, like if I'm in a relationship and we are living large, like, and I always say, start out like you can hold out. And sometimes as women, start start out like you can hold out. What that means is like, start, if you're going to, if you're like, let's say if you're trying to get me right and you're buying me watches, you're getting me necklaces, you're getting me laced down Birkins, everything like that. And then you stop like a year into the relationship or two years into the relationship. Now I'm going to think, is something wrong with me? Is he falling out of love with me? Because you did all these things in the beginning to get me and now you're stopping. So what does that mean? Like, and if it's financial, be man enough to have that conversation with me because I I saw another meme that said like, if she wasn't with you at the bus station or something like, if she'll be with you at the, in the furs, then she can sit with you at the bus station. If you let our financial situation get us that far before you had a conversation and we're supposed to be partners, why should I now have to suffer with you? Well, you gotta think about it. I mean, listen, I understand I had many businesses in my life, mm-hmm. right? I'm not going to say many, four, right? And three of them failed. And, and it didn't fail in just like, a couple of them didn't fail like in a year time frame. It failed Failing almost. teaches you lessons. Yeah, but failing also humbles you and then right. it'll show you who's really with you. Right. So like when, let's say in a month or two months, like you just see it going downhill. And then but next that's the game. Can't. If you if you're listening to are you gonna are you gonna see who's with you like like a like okay I'm not gonna tell her that my business failed I'm just gonna see if she leaves if I stop doing this that's a game that's a mind game instead of just telling me what it is like baby the business isn't doing good right now I can't do this but you know if you give me time we 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 can make it work I can probably get back on this but But right now we gotta conserve but here's my thing is my thing is this is like sometimes. In a in a man's life, things happen so fast. Right. And when you're trying to pick up all the pieces, you don't actually have time to think about having a conversation when it's happening fast. I'm not saying when it's been a three year, two year stretch, and right. you know it's been diminishing, and then you never said nothing. I'm talking about in a three to six month stretch where where shit is just going down. Right. And you're just trying to pick it up, and, and that you're trying conversation to conversation is hard, but and you have to even, have hard conversation. I don't even think that it's really hard. Sometimes that's the last thing on your mind. Especially depending on what you already got and you're trying to maintain. You're not focused well, on what that. if yeah. what if back to what you were saying, what if now your wife can provide for the table? What if your wife wants to help? Like, yeah, I can I can sit back and let you drive, but now when you need me, what if I'm willing to step forward? But now you're not allowing me to do that because you're not even thinking that I'm able to handle what you're going through or yeah. you can't I, I, so much is happening. Like, I'm your partner. I'm your homie. I bet you told your homie, like, dang, bro, my business is ain't doing good, blah, blah, blah. But I'm you, your homie. But you know what the problem is? What? The problem is when a guy asks you what you bring to the table and you don't have an answer. See, you are my homie and you are my partner. And there are women, like, I believe a power couple is when I'm down, you up. You, mm-hmm. could, you could hold this up till I get back up. I say this all the time. I don't care who you are in life. You will go up. You will come down. Right. For but sure. you will go back up. But sometimes when you go down, you go down so fast. You don't have time to think about everything else. Right. right? But if you got a person who's a partner and you know their capabilities, I can include you in helping me, helping us, not me, helping us get sure. back up. Right. Right. So like that's why that conversation and all conversations are so important. Mm-hmm. I need to. I know what you can do, but I think I know what you can do. You really know what you can do. So if I'm asking you, yo, what is it that you're great at? Maybe I can find a way to maximize what you're great at for us. It's not like a personal thing. It's not a disrespectful thing. 
not everybody knows. Like you might, you, you probably dated somebody for mad long. Mm-hmm. I know I have. And then at the mid to end of that relationship, you start finding things out about them that you're like, damn, if I had a new this. Yeah, I wouldn't even be here I right now. I wouldn't even be you here. You didn't even give me the choice. Or maybe I could have even helped you do right. this. Right, for sure. And that's all because nobody wants to have the actual conversations of the capabilities. And I personally believe that's because we don't really want partners. It has to be at the right time, right place. Like conversations, like I don't think that conversations should be had if you're emotionally passionate at the moment or if you're having like a heated debate like if we're debating and then you you start asking me well what do you bring to the table like now I'm in a defense mode like I'm not trying to have a real conversation I'm trying to see well what are you talking about are you trying to play me now we're speaking from ego and pride in a different place from love and trying to come together and find unison all right so you all right I just want to get into this Mm mm-hmm so you were we were, we already talked about that okay. not already but now that we talked about that right I'm just bringing it back to um, when you were saying about how like somebody asked you I don't know when that was mm-hmm. we're not gonna disclose it a while ago a while ago cool now if somebody asked you today mm-hmm. what I bring to the table yeah I'm not saying answer it but could you answer that without being defensive obviously in the right space right in the right space yeah could you answer that without trying to show you walking out because I, what you mean walking out, like getting up and walking out literally? Nah, because what happened was on the last one, right? When he asked that, you walked out, you started bringing it to somebody else's table, so he came back. It wasn't necessarily, when we were talking about me um, having that discussion with him, it wasn't that I walked out immediately and said, yeah. no, this is it. Like when he had that discussion, like I said, he also brought up the fact that out of all the girls that he talked to, I was the one. So in my mind, I'm already asking him, what are we? What are we doing? And he answered it for me. He was dating other women. And out of all of them, he would talk to me, but he didn't know what I brought to the table. And that was an answer for me. (laughs) He's weighing his options. Right. He was weighing his options. He was young. He was having fun. And that was okay for me. But, you know, and we still talk. But once I found someone who was interested in me, I kind of moved away from that. We didn't leave at a bad point yeah. and say, oh, blah, blah, blah. But now going forward, if that mm-hmm. conversation happens, how do you do you handle it the same way? Or would you think you would handle it the same way? Like, my thing is, you know what? I got two questions for you. Mm-hmm. What do you want in a man? Hmm. A spouse. I want someone that is a provider. I want someone who's loving. Um, I want someone who's able to communicate with me because communication, I feel like, is key. And understanding is key, too, because we can communicate all day. But if our understandings are different, then we're not even going to be communicating. You're not going to understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to understand what you're saying. Um, I want someone who lets me be myself. And what I mean by that is... I don't want to be in a relationship and hide who I am as far as I like to twerk. I like to have fun. I like to go out with my homegirls. I like to get on Instagram live. I like to get ratchet. I don't want to have to hide those things about who I am or have to portray to be this perfect person that I'm not because I'm going to be unhappy. Like I'm not living in my truth. And I feel like it's going to get boring because now I have to keep up this facade. So someone who accepts me for me, um, someone who really loves me through everything. And I mean, the hard conversations, like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like when the wig comes off and I'm crying <laughs> and, um, you yeah. know, and, um, I'm telling you about my family and my, my life and my background. I want you to be accepting. Um, I'm not really... I'm not really too difficult. Like love, providing, understanding, okay, commitment. Now, I'm gonna ask you even more of a serious question. Mm-hmm. I know that you want somebody that all of those traits or attributes. What are you willing to sacrifice for a man that can accept those things? I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um what I was willing to sacrifice, I, I can speak from experience. I was willing to sacrifice myself. I had a child um, when having a kid was something that I really wanted. But at the time in my life, I was, you know, really 
up here and living a wild and crazy life and I settled down, a woman is willing to sacrifice um, her time, her like other, like if you're talking to ventures, other men, yeah. other ventures, you can sacrifice your career because most of the time women move with the man. So if you move to California to pursue your dreams, or let's say if I have a kid, we have a kid, and your dreams are in California, I'm going to move with you even if my life is still in Atlanta. I'm going to let you pursue your dream. Most of the time, women sacrifice the most when being in a relationship. We Life, jobs, friends. I mean, I disagree, but... You disagree? I disagree. Wow. In an effed up situation, and it got as toxic as it did because I was trying to make... <laughs> everyone happy i was i was trying yeah. to i was trying to make the naysayers happy about like oh she's just gold digging or i'm trying to make somebody happy saying that it would never work he's a player he's a he crush a lot he ain't gonna wife you now i'm staying in this toxic relationship because i'm worried about what other people have to say instead of actually this relationship is not serving me it's mm. not positively serving me so let me get up i stayed until it was too late and we had to be separated like by the police and if they wouldn't have separated us, Lord only knows where we would be right now. We'd probably still be together in some toxic shit. Going I mean, back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I don't think it should ever stay that. I don't think you that's should ever saying, get to that but point. That's what, when you but, say but that, I'm that's I'm saying what stick I hear. it out. But I, I get that. But when I'm saying stick it out, I'm saying stick it out when it's like, yo, times are bad. I'm not saying that the relationship is bad. I'm saying times are bad. But you have to realize that when you're speaking to women... Women are very impressionable. So when you say stick it out or you if you don't see it through and you get up, I don't think that it, because I want to bounce around from table to table to table. Like if I don't like if you don't like a restaurant, you're going to go to another one. You're going to go to another one. You're going to go to that doesn't make you a bad person for not liking old Charlie's and you're going to. But you understand you can't also enable it, too, because when you keep bouncing around from table to table to table, sometimes you never eat. Like at the end of the day, you're going to you go eat. Well, you're going to go home hungry. I don't think so. I, I think mean, you can go. To, I think you can go from table to table to table and be very full. Nah, because what's gonna happen is eventually, eventually, you're never gonna know where to sit, and when you don't know where to sit, you can never be served properly. But if those, if the tables, if you got up, every, if, and let's I mean, be clear, if the men do mm -hmm. not fit me, I'm not gonna stay in something. And I don't think that if a yeah. woman doesn't fit you, then you should try to make her fit you. No, nah, no, nah, like, yeah, I agree. Don't make any, and don't be scared of dating and keep dating. Like that's what we were here. For. We were put here to find a person to match with. And if you don't find that match, it's okay to keep dating. I think you, were, like, you weren't we're here to find a person to match with. You were here to find a person to build with. And I think building and matching is different. And now we live building, in the fantasy progressing, that... progressing, partnership, all of that. Yeah, but, but like matching, this is the thing though. You got to think about it. In 2022, people, almost the vein almost came out. People think that they're going to... The gonna, vein is coming out. Yeah, the people think that they're going to match. The, that's the most fantasy makeup fairy tale, which is why more than fifty percent of marriages fail. What do you get when fail. I say match? Like, what do you hear when I? What say I hear match? match is like, okay, you work and I work. We're gonna work together, but when times get rough. No, that's not what I meant. What I meant by match is like, you match me. You, we we mesh, and that maybe is the word that I'm looking for. But like, you mesh well with somebody. We we were put here to mesh, find our soulmates. Do you right? grow? Yeah, I feel like we grow every day. All right, cool. So when you grow and I grow, right. let's say we're dating, mm -hmm. you growing and I'm growing, right? You have a conversation. No, 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 no. Scratch that. Scratch that. You're growing into a new woman. Mm -hmm. The woman that I see you as today will mm -hmm. not be the same woman that I see you as 10 right. years from now. The man that you see me as today will not be the same, hopefully, will not be the same man that you see me 10 years from now. So when you grow, you have to understand that you got to constantly find a way to keep together because you can't mess the whole way. There's nobody messing through exactly. every growth cycle. But you don't want to grow apart. So you yeah. come to uh, the table and you talk about where you are. And I feel like it's always good to, to sit down and talk about where you are in your relationship now, whether it's six months. Am I making you happy? Uh, is there anything I can change? Is there anything that you like? Is there anything that you don't like? Because if you don't, let's fix it. Don't wait until until you can't take it anymore and then say, I don't want to be with you because all of these things and I knew nothing. Like Yeah, life is, but I think this is how I view life is quarters. Right. If it was a game, there's first, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, right? First quarter, whatever. Second quarter, you meet me. My second quarter game and my third quarter game is going to be different. 
So then when I say stick it out, what I'm saying is, okay, cool. Sometimes, I'm not saying all the time. Right. I don't want to get that misconstrued. Right. Sometimes you got to be like, yo, I know who he's going to be. Right. And I think and, women do that most of the yeah, time. And, and we see who you could be. But men do it too. Because think about it. Men will take somebody at the bus stop. Women will too. Women won't take... Most women will. Most, most women, women can will not a broke take... Man. In the generation, in the generation we are in you know now, you're losing yes. Me. You're losing no, me. No, I'm you're not. You're losing no, me. I'm you're not. losing no, me. I'm not. I was with you there until are, now. There are women who date broke guys because they're in love. Like when I was in a relationship with a guy and he didn't have money, that wasn't why I dated him. I dated him because I really liked him. There were high value men, and I mean high value <laughs> men. <laughs> I mean, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper type stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and 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 I chose to be with someone who didn't have as much as this guy because I felt like this guy meshes with me well. We can talk about real life things. I don't think that this guy fits me well. And I want to see where this guy takes me. Yeah, but you know what happens? Out of all of your relationships, which... I don't know if you're with him right now. No. Exactly. So out of all of your relationships, out of all your relationships, right? Ooh, child. <laughs> exactly. All of your relationships that you had, right? There, you probably dated more high value men than you dated that type of man. High standards keep you from low quality experiences. And I want that with women too. This has been a great episode of Eight the Table. Shout out to Kiyomi for popping up. Right, on. Kiyomi, and we had a great debate at the eight. What's good, you guys? This is Kiyomi Leslie, and we had a great debate at the 8. And you already know, ladies, if a man asks you what you bring to the table, you need to just get up and walk to another table and let him see what you do at another table. And if you keep on walking to too many tables, you might end up looking like a server, so be careful. <laughs> I'm just saying that. <laughs> you got a point. You got a point. I'll let you pass. You got a point. You got a point. I'll let you pass. <laughs> Everything has been great with you, Kiyomi. I want to say thank you for popping up. Thank you for having me. I will see everybody next time at 8 at the Table. And make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. Pop out.